They used to I do haven't that in the seen Disney any. Studio. Haven't seen any yet. They used to do that in the Disney Studio. Yeah, that's one of my beats many years ago. Was Disney? I used to work there actually at Disney World back when I was in Orlando. Did you work at Disney World? Yeah, it was like a rite of passage for kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful place. I still like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went back for vacation recently, and it was a totally different experience from having worked there, you know. I really enjoyed a lot of the new stuff I saw. Yeah. Well, a lot of good people have worked at places like that. Uh, one that comes to mind is Steve, uh, what's his name, Steve, the comedian. Oh, Martin? Yeah, Steve Martin worked in the Magic Shot. Oh, okay. That's where he worked on his routine. That's why he has an arrow through the head. Oh, okay. So he's playing with all the toys that he got there. Okay. Yeah, he was playing with the toys in the magic shop. Yeah. So, how'd you get started on this uh, product? Uh, you're West Platt, right? right. West Platt. And right. You're with um, uh, Icarus Studios, Fallen Earth. Fallen Earth. Okay. And how'd you get involved with this? Um, actually, I was living out in the Pacific Northwest with my dog, kind of okay. doing this whole uh, sabbatical thing. I've grown up in Florida, worked as a journalist, and was taking a break and playing Warcraft during the winter time because uh, uh -oh. there was not a whole lot else to do uh, on, uh, on Mount Underwood uh, at that point. And uh, happened to meet someone on the server I was playing with uh, who worked uh, at Icarus Studios on the East Coast and kind of got a relationship going with him. And then in late winter, uh, in uh, early 2006, he threw me a message in game on Warcraft and said, you know, we're hiring writers over here at Icarus to work on Fallen Earth. If you're interested, you should apply. So I sent in my application, you know, letter, uh, all that good stuff. They flew me out east, uh, did an interview, uh, and got to work pretty soon after that. Um, before that, part of uh, it wasn't really my journalistic resume or playing Warcraft that got me into it. Uh, I've also developed text-based games for about a decade now, so muds, mushes, uh, that sort of thing, uh, which are still out there. People forget about yeah, them, yeah. but uh, you know, with Warcraft uh, coming along, it's harder and harder to get audiences for those. So you know, I did the next logical thing and moved into a graphical MMO, uh, which is just a, a great evolutionary step forward for me. All right, so. Um what, what makes this game special? Uh, well, first, it's the setting. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic MMO. It takes place on Earth. It has no elves, no orcs, uh, none of the things you kind of see in, in your standard fare of an MMO. Uh, you don't have classes. Uh, you don't get to pick if you're a warrior uh, or a healer or a caster. You can be all those things. You can be the person who specializes in mutations, which is effectively a caster. You can be a person who heals uh, and has abilities for that. You can focus on being a melee fighter or a pistol fighter, or you can do combinations of those things. You just take ability points, spend them where you want to spend them in the stats that you want to improve that control the skills you want to improve, and it's a lot of customization that most places don't have. It's a little trickier. You kind of have to mind where you're going and kind of look further beyond the horizon than uh, most MMOs, so it's not just spoon-fed to you. But, uh, but I think that helps set it apart. The crafting system, uh, I think, is second to none. Uh, really harkens back to some of the yeah, things I, I kind of wonder, you know, some of these games, you know, you, you, uh, you have to learn how to make a coney stew, which is a rabbit stew. Mm -hmm. But every time you kill a coney, it has no meat. Yeah. You have to go buy it from somebody. Right. Why as a hunter, why can't you harvest the meat? And you can with arms. And then there are all these rabbits running around without any skins. Yeah. Because, you know, you kill them and only half of them have skins. Right. I haven't figured that one out yet. In our game, you kill a rabbit, you'll get two things when you mouse over. You'll get an option to harvest him or loot him. If you loot him, you get whatever junk happens to be on him. Maybe a dirty scrap of fur that's just vendor trash that you go sell. If right, you right. harvest him, it'll use your nature skill and you can skin them. You'll either get meat or maybe ragged, you know, leather of some kind. Maybe you can use that in crafting. So we try to do a lot more that's, you know, friendly to crafters uh, and makes killing it more than just, okay, hitting a, ba a, a, a pinata to get money out of it. Uh, yeah, so I, th I think it's amazing in some of these games they have animals that don't have any ears. Mm-hmm. You know, nine nine out of ten animals don't have any ears. Right, but the mission wants you to get them. They're, they're all... They're all uh, Deaf, <laughs> and and they still heard me sneaking up on them. That's right. So it doesn't make any sense. One of the uh, things that I think I liked about EverQuest was if you saw something on the character, it usually was on them. Mm -hmm. If they had a weapon or if they had a piece of armor, right, you would see it on them. And later on, it would be you'd find it in their loot. If it wasn't on them, 
you couldn't see it, right. then it wouldn't be in the loop. One of the things we've scaled away from that, uh, primarily because you don't want to have uh, an equipment-based looting thing for our game. Uh, because, like I said, 95% of the stuff we have in the game can be crafted by right, the player. Right. So what we do instead is most of the people who drop stuff in the game, most of the creatures that drop something, if they're humanoid, you might see them wearing armor, but the assumption is you beat them so badly, you're just going to get a tattered remnant of whatever they're wearing. Or After a, piece a while, of you should develop enough skill to not, not be able to do that. You would think, but we're going to go ahead with the mechanic of saying that in order to make sure the crafter's taken care of, where, you know, if, if you're able to drop equipment that way all the time, the, the player crafter is kind of left in the cold. And Unless he makes really good stuff. But the stuff ends up having the same stats a lot of times. I mean, he's going to be able to make better stuff, but as you, stra as you stat up characters that level with you at some point, the enemies you fight are going to be around the same level, you'd still be dropping equipment that was like that. And it still takes away, I think, from the experience for a crafter. So I agree with you about yeah. that. You, know, you have to find a way to make what they do valuable. Right. And uh, not so sure you have to give up other things to do that, but I think it's imagination. Some, I've, I've, I'm always brought back to Walt Disney. He used to say that uh, impossible means you have no imagination. Right, right. If you have enough well, imagination, you can figure a way to do it. So sure, it and it, it's certainly possible. I mean, no one has said it wasn't, but, but the choice that we're making is we're going to say this is the path we go for the crafters. Uh, it may not be the smartest thing for people who don't want to deal with crafters. You know, oh, I love yeah. crafting. Crafting's yeah. my most fun thing. Well, and that's awesome, but there are going to be people who go, I just want the loot. I want a boss I can kill that will give me a great sword or a perfect gun for what I want to do. And we're not going to do that just because our mentality, and we have to be consistent within the framework, the parameters that we're setting up. Right. You know, this is how we're going to do it. And you know, if we don't do it in this one instance, players are going to kind of get onto that and go, well, why'd you do it here and not over here? Why do you make an exception there? And at that point, you're kind of dancing around all the inconsistencies. Yeah, you don't want to be inconsistent, that's right. for sure. You're going to piss more people off that way. Right, right. So if we build the expectation from the tutorial on where you loot a guy, you can get ammo off him if he's got a gun. Uh, you may be able to get a piece of metal that's valuable. Well, you better be able to get ammo. Right. Ammo you get. Ammo you get. Because you're going to shoot that away. It's going right. to be gone. And it's expensive in our game. It's not cheap. So the party can you make it? Sure. It's one of the things you can craft in ballistics.